NATO can easily capture Moscow today by passing through Finland, Estonia or Latvia. Expert Ukrainian political strategist Mikhail Shitelman said in an interview with UNIAN that the events taking place in Russia recently have made Putin look like a complete loser. A new raid by Russian volunteers is the hottest news for the rest of the week. It looks like they got serious. I remember their second approach, when they also fussed there for quite a long time and the Russians tried to knock them out for quite a long time. Putin also boasted about his exploits. The great patriotic war against the Russian volunteer corps was then going on in the Belgorod region. Now, at least, we know exactly what goals the volunteers are pursuing. They directly and very openly named them participation in elections. Therefore, I think that they must hold out at least until Sunday in order to completely ruin the elections for Putin to show that he does not rule this country. Mikhail Shitelman said, according to him, Putin personally, okay. What's more important here is what his team thinks now, what his elite thinks. The same governors. They are important people. Should be. Where should they go now? What should they tell their population? How should they answer for all this and to whom? In this situation, Putin was presented as a complete loser in front of his entourage. Let's look at the political task of the war. The electorate is not important to us. We are not interested in what 140 million people think. What is important to us is what 1.2 million of the real elite of Russia think. And most likely, the fighters of these battalions do not need to achieve the goal that they voice advancing on Moscow. It seems to me that a revolution in the Kremlin can happen much faster if volunteers move deeper and deeper within a week or two. And they can advance. Look how the Russian army runs. After all, practically no one resists. Entire checkpoints there fled. Question. Why is everything left to chance? And the answer to this question is the simplest. They simply have no one. The entire Russian army is in Ukraine. Everything else is just some kids who don't understand how to fight. Meanwhile, professional soldiers came against them. Of course, they will run away. There is no army inside the country. It is a fact. Today, Russia can be taken with bare hands. If NATO had decided to capture Moscow or St. Petersburg, they would have taken it without losses coming from Finland, Estonia or Latvia, Mikhail Schittelman said. Great historic mistake. Stoltenberg urges NATO not to allow Putin to win war. NATO members should quickly provide additional military assistance to Ukraine to avoid a great historic mistake of a Russian victory on the battlefield, according to NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. He emphasizes that Ukrainians have enough courage, they lack ammunition. Together we have the capacity to provide Ukraine with what it needs. Now we need to show the political will to do so, the Secretary General said. Stoltenberg emphasizes that NATO countries must dig deep and deliver quickly as delay will lead to real consequences on the battlefield. So this is a critical moment. It would be a great historic mistake to allow Putin to prevail, he said. Jens Stoltenberg told that since the start of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Russian occupiers have lost 350,000 of their soldiers killed and wounded states the NATO Secretary General. He mentions that the number of killed and wounded Russian soldiers is based on data from Western intelligence services. However, he has not specified the exact number of Russian military personnel killed. According to Stoltenberg, the losses of the occupiers in Ukraine have significantly increased recently. The aggressor country is paying a very high price for minor successes in terms of controlling certain territories. The Secretary General reminds that the Ukrainian armed forces also sank a significant part of the Russian Black Sea fleet. Additionally, Ukrainian forces managed to shoot down important and expensive long-range airborne early warning and control aircraft A-50. It should be noted that the data from the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine differs from what was announced by the NATO Secretary General. It is known that since the start of the full-scale war, Russian occupiers have lost 427,840 of their soldiers. Build. Putin unexpectedly lets out atrocious goals of war in Ukraine. Journalists of Build Media Tabloid have drawn attention to a passage of the interview of Russian President Vladimir Putin to the propagandist Dmitry Kiselev, in which he said, It is ridiculous for us to negotiate now just because they are running out of ammunition. Columnist Filip Pyatov expressed the opinion that this sentence alone makes it clear. Putin is using every military weakness to attack and achieve his goals of destroying Ukraine and enslaving the Ukrainian people. 
This exposes the mindset of the dictator and the naivety of those politicians who believe in peace talks with the Russian Federation. The journalist emphasized, Piatov noted that Ukraine is currently suffering losses on several fronts because of not receiving enough weapons and ammunition. And according to the logics of some politicians, Putin should be ready to negotiate under such conditions. But the Russian dictator follows a completely different logic. By negotiation, Putin actually means nothing more than Ukraine's surrender. The columnist explained. Paul Ronsheimer, deputy editor-in-chief of the publication, also agrees with this assessment. This is a response to all those who continue to demand steps from Ukraine and the West to make negotiations possible. Despite the failures of 2022, when his troops were not able to take Kiev and he lost territories in the east and south, Putin's goal has never changed. Putin wants to destroy Ukraine by even greater numbers of his troops and military economy to deprive it of its existence, to erase its culture. As for the West, if we can't do more sooner or later, Putin will achieve that goal. Time is now playing in his favor, the journalist stated.